Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk about my first season as an Airbnb host. It was an eventful summer and I'm excited to share my experience with you. Thanks for coming by. Airbnb. We all know about it and if you haven't actually done it, I'm sure you've thought about can I rent a, a room in my house or uh, an apartment that I have in the basement or you know my cottage, uh, how can I utilize it to make some extra income? It really does come in handy and for a lot of people around the world they built a business off of it. As an artist I've used Airbnb across the world. Some good experiences, some bad and all of it helped me really prepare my rental this year. Um, I'd Airbnb apartments in Toronto in the past here and there uh, when I had one apartment left and I had moved to a new one and I had a bit of overlap in lease so I was really just renting to whoever would take it because I was trying to get as much money out of it as I could at the time so I didn't take it that serious but this season when I decided to Airbnb my family cottage uh, it was a different story. I wanted it to go as well as possible. We did renovations in the spring which obviously went a little longer than they should have as renovations do so we didn't actually end up getting it rented out till mid-July. So we really only had it booked up for about half the season by the time we got started. We charged about $2.50 a night and we essentially booked up every single night uh, till the end of September minus the odd random night that got left out. So overall went very well I must say. Obviously it being our first uh, season we had a few issues some plumbing here, some electrical there, but uh, you know we worked through the kinks and luckily people were, were really understanding that you know it's an older rustic cottage, we did some renovations, this was our first season, um, we really focused on customer service and you know if things did go wrong we, we did the most everything we could to, to try and make the experience better for people. I ended up giving a few discounts and refunds for little things just to keep people happy. Um, so yeah I was really happy with the, the overall experience of it. And on the flip side, uh, we had a few weird things with, with renters, of course. Uh, nothing too crazy. People moving furniture to weird, really weird places and then leaving it there even though we specifically ask in our instructions that if any furniture is moved, please return it to its original location. Uh, we had somebody leave some chicken bones on the stove and then a note saying this is for the cleaning lady. I don't know if they meant it was for her to eat and it was supposed to be some sort of stew or if they meant for, for her to clean up. Either way, um, <laughs> she got that taken care of and then some people just messy and stuff like that but nothing too crazy. I do have some other uh, stories from when I rented in, a, in my apartment in Toronto before but we'll have to go into that in another video. Uh, some people who I've told that story to will be laughing right now because it's a good one but uh, again not for another time another video. I gotta say having a good cleaner and a good handyman on staff is absolutely key. They were the real reason why everything was able to run so smoothly this year because I was doing this from Toronto and you know it was a success thank you thanks to them. I really appreciate it. Now a couple things I learned. Be clear and concise with all communication. Over communicate as much as possible. Do not assume that people will get things or understand things that are you know left unsaid. Explain things like a child really. Um, this goes for for renters as well as your team. You know just be as clear as possible. One thing uh, I remember happened my cleaning lady bless her heart she asked you know do I do I throw out the food that a, that a renter left and I, I just assumed that she meant you know food that would go bad but she actually threw out everything including all the condiments that I had purchased to leave for the renters as well as all the bathroom supplies that I had left for them. She thought everyone that they were left by the renters and so she threw it all out which was unfortunate uh, but we learned a little lesson there. Next would be to accept instant bookings. You can set up the parameters so that someone can, can just book and they'll, they'll have to have had a certain amount of reviews or a certain uh, level of, of rating and they can just book instantly. You don't have to accept them and, and send a message and all that stuff because that gives them time to go find another place if you take too long to reply. So instant bookings definitely key uh, helps with, your, with uh, getting as much bookings as possible. Uh, third, have a lower minimum night stay say two nights for example. Uh, at first I played with the idea of oh should I just do a week because you know then I don't have to have as much turnover, I don't have to clean it as many times um, 
But the thing is, you know what? You just have those minimum two nights, they'll book up. Don't worry about that. It was something I was worried about at first, but it's, it's really a non-issue. Also play with your pricing. If there's an event in the area, make sure you take advantage. Um, as demand goes up for, for accommodations, so does the price, obviously. So play with that pricing. Uh, they, Airbnb has smart pricing that you can set up that will kind of, I think, follow an algorithm with the, the amount of uh, attention and, and, and looking for bookings in your area. They will adjust the price. I didn't really use that. I might try it next year, but I just kind of planned it out for the season. You know, Canada Day would be more expensive. Labor Day weekend would be more expensive. Um, and it worked out for me, but I have heard really good things about their smart pricing. So something you can play with. Now, next on the list is be accommodating. <laughs> no matter how ridiculous it might sound, um, and it will be sometimes, just go with it. You know, uh, just be, be as, as accommodating as you can for people. Some people just have maybe weird expectations in their head. Some people are coming from the city and we were dealing with a cottage, so they had these, you know, expectations that of it was going to be the same comforts as home. And it's not necessarily when you're at a, a cottage in the wilderness, you know, so do your best to be accommodating, make people feel comfortable. Uh, even if they sound a little crazy. <laughs> and lastly is ask for that five star review. Uh, if you leave that in your check in and your checkout instructions saying, Hey, uh, be sure to leave us a five star review. It really shows them that that's what you're going for. That's what the service level of service you're going for and it'll nudge them to give you that review. Uh, even though Airbnb does bug both hosts and renters to leave a review, a lot of times I notice the renters would just, you know, ignore it, not, not bother. I've done the same, but leaving that in your instructions really helps. Um, just a little, last little piece of advice, highly recommend it. Um, and as it is the end of the season for us, we're a summer cottage, we spring, summer, fall, uh, we shut it down for the winter. We learned a lot. I'm excited to add a few things, tweak a few things, add some amenities for next season. Uh, I'd love to hear about your Airbnb experiences, good and bad. Please leave them in the comments. I'm excited to read those. Thank you for stopping by. Stay hungry. Morgan Little checking out. See you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.